Hello, welcome back. So we're in the process of actually putting the stuff back on the tank. I know we did not have a video of it actually coming out, but we'll cover a few things on how to actually get the tank out of the car later. Uh, this is my fall off, so we're going to work on getting all this stuff put in and uh, hopefully back in the car today. So right now we're putting the fuel level cinder in and we're using some sealant to help hold the gasket in place while we're putting this in. Also helps uh, the longevity of the life of the seal, helps it from getting dried out. Uh, as soon as we get that in, we'll move on to the actual fuel pump. So we're just making sure our seal surface is clean and dry, except for our sealant here. Put a touch of that all the way around. Don't need a whole lot. And this is called uh, Permashield Gasket Dressing and Sealant is what we're using. This go two ways. When you put it on, make sure you have it in the correct position, which is this piece should be down like that right there. Then it raises up. It's also got guides on the tank itself for little ears. Right here. Make sure you get it lined up right. In here. We've got a slide on collar here. It simply lines up and it tapers to put tension on it. Make sure and get that on there real tight. Because if you don't, you will have fuel in your trunk. Raise it up, raise the tank up, and I'll tap the other two. That way you get equal pressure all the way around. Not too much, or you end up being that tab just like I did. These mats tend to kind of come loose. There is an adhesive on them. Uh, we're just going to have to make sure we've got them in place as we go back in with the tank. So we're just making sure we don't have any debris in the tank before we start putting our pump unit in. See, it did have some dust in the bottom, but really not much build up. It's a good time to inspect your tank as well. Make sure you don't have any rust or corrosion inside the tank. Being as we only work on this stuff on weekends, we forgot to show you to put the bracket back on. You got a collar, a little sleeve that goes over the pump. And that's a rubber bushing uh, to help with vibration. Fits there. And you got another one right here that fits on this piece. See, it's got two t tabs here two holes, line it right up like that. We put the uh, rubber bushings on the pump itself before we try to get it on the retainer. We may have to wind up hitting it with a little bit of silicone lubricant to help slide it all back together because it is a pretty tight fit. I'm going to use a little silicone lubricant. It's a wet type. It does not dry or glue it. It just simply helps things uh, slide back together easier. Rotating on us. Yeah, it did rotate some. Pop it back out. See so if you can push it in, the hands are slick. There you go. So there we go. A lot easier. Yeah, once you get that silicone lube in, it slides on a lot easier. For your information, the way I got it apart. Just stick a screwdriver right here, pry it back, and it'll push it out, and then you can drop it down out of there. You do have a little resistor pack that hooks in line between the pump and the, the main connector, which is here. That's where you'll be testing the fuel pump in the car before you pull it apart. 
this connector ties in here and leads over to this main connector. So you can actually get to these, uh, this one of course a lot easier than you can get to this one. But you can get to those inside the car before you ever pull the tank out to test and uh, see if you got power and ground going to your fuel pump. Right now he's tightening up the fuel line that's inside the tank. It hooks onto the pump. It has a uh, simple hex head or flat head screwdriver style hose clamp on it. Just get that down tight so it doesn't slide off. It's got one screw that holds the pump in. It sits right here in the top down to the side. And you have a, uh, I guess for a better term, a basket in there. Keeps the fuel from sloshing down. It's actually got two positions to uh, put this pump because these tanks, some of them are designed for two pumps. If you have an XKR, you will have two pumps. Uh, those cars require a little more fuel due to the uh, extra horsepower uh, produced by the uh, supercharger. What I'm doing now is loosen that clamp a little bit on there and rotating the pump around just a little bit on the hose so I can line it up with a screw down screw hole. You want to make sure once it's all in place, check that line and make sure you don't have any kinks in it. Do be careful working around this uh, port in the tank. It does have some fairly sharp edges so you can cut yourself uh, and or uh, the wires or the hose. Um, so just be careful as you're working on it. So this is a very small screw so Try to hang on to it. You drop it, it may be hard to find inside the tank. But uh, like most anything I work on, I try to run the screw down as far as I can with my fingers. That way I know I'm not cross-threading anything. Be careful when you tighten this screw back down. The other pump, when I removed it, it actually twisted the pump and half the uh, uh, sock filter was uh, up against the uh, the basket? Yeah, the basket that it's set in. Don't torque this down too tight because that's just thin sheet metal. Don't want to take a chance of stripping it out. Yeah. Or warping the, the basket that they have built inside here. Yeah. That looks good right there. Okay. So we've got the new fuel pump in place. Uh, bolts in nice and tight. Hose looks good. No kinks. Um, our lines are good. Like I said, be careful around this edge not to uh, cut or tear anything. We're going to use some more of our gasket seal here on this upper gasket. Like I said, just a, a little to do you. Just kind of smear it around. It's actually a, act sort of like a lubricant too where this stuff slides some, but in the past, I've used a Loctite brand, which was just a little thicker. didn't run quite as much as this, but this is supposed to be the same stuff. Set by a different company. Get our gasket centered. Put a thin layer of this stuff on top of the gasket as well, so that you have it on both sides of your seal. This is not a necessity to use this sealer, but it's a nice precaution to help make sure that everything seals up and you don't have any leaks. Especially since these aren't new gaskets. Yeah, this gasket here, unfortunately, we did not get a new one for. Um, so we are actually reusing the this upper gasket. The lower gasket here for the level sensor was brand new. We may go to some of here too. Here. Yeah, slide on. Have some slide on. So we're going to use a little bit of that gasket on our return pipes here, or, or actually send and return pipes. Um, this will help them slide on as well as help them seal back up. Now each one of these also has a retaining clamp. They're very short, but they do have retaining clamps on both sides. So these clamps. They are a spring style clamp, so no screw or, or hex head nut for them. 
So you're going to want to make sure you've got them on your hose so that when you, uh, you hook all this back up, you can pop it back on there. Once again, these are not new pipes, so they're not quite as flexible as if you were to replace them. But they're still good, so we're not going to replace them. I might caution you, some guys have taken it off this plastic end, the, the, and uh, when they did that, they take a chance of breaking this, and actually one guy did break his. That's the reason it was suggested to take it off the metal pipe end. So these are old cars, so anything plastic, you're going to want to be careful around it. Especially underneath the hood, where it does get hot and cold and hot and cold. It definitely will make the plastic brittle. Okay, so we got the hoses on. It's got a lock ring, just like on the front here, that slides in and it tapers. So as you tap it around, it'll put tension against both sides of the gasket and seal. And he's slowly working around to hit each side to get it from uh, uh, too much tension on one side to the other. You want to drive these in all the way till the push tab hits the stop tab. So as you can see, these are the plastic components we're talking about. So you want to be careful with those. Uh, your connectors here. And then this is the ring that we were just tapping on. So like I said, you want to get your, your tapping touching your stop. And you've got several points where it's going to do that. You want to get those all touching. That way you know you've got a good tight seal. So now we're going to hook our connectors back. They are two different connectors, so getting them mixed up is impossible, as well as they are keyed, so you can't flip-flop them around the wrong position. So if it doesn't go, make sure you've got it lined up properly and that there's no grime or anything inside. Nice thing about these tanks, being as though they are in the trunk, typically they're going to be pretty clean. Okay. So now we've got our fuel system back in order on the tank. Got our main connector ready so once we get it back in the car we can hook that up. Of course you see we still have a, a ground cable as well as uh, a line here that we're going to have to get hooked back into. And we'll touch on that here in a moment uh, when we get underneath the car and uh, of course in the trunk as well to show you where all these all connect. 